Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our worship service today. So delighted that you are here. A couple of quick announcements. We're having a church-wide information meeting tonight on our long-range plan. Uh, nothing has been decided. We want you to come and share with us and to hear where we are and where we're going to be within the next year or so. And so I invite all of you to come uh, be with us. We've got dinner tonight. Uh, at 5 o'clock, 5.45, uh, the program will start, and I do hope to see you there. We're having chicken pot pie, okay, if you like chicken pot pie, and uh, it, it, we're asking for a donation for you to give for the meal, and we invite you. I hope you do make plans to attend, because this is about uh, the future of your church. Uh, we also uh, want to remind you of the braided bread and also of the taco supper for the fundraisers from Methodist Women. Uh, I hope all of you will, uh, will do those as well. Isn't it a great day to be in God's house? Can you turn and just wave at each other and welcome them today in this worship? I'll just introduce myself. Oh, you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie Connor, everyone. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Great to be with y'all this morning. Um, George and Meredith asked me to come and talk about stewardship this morning, and I felt led to lead to talk about just a little more than stewardship. Um, when people unite as professing members of a local United Methodist Church, they profess their faith in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, and in the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Thus they make known their desire to live our daily lives as disciples of Jesus Christ. The covenant, we covenant together with God and with the other members of our church to keep the vows which are part of our order of confirmation and reception into our church. And there are seven vows that we take, and this morning I want to remind us of one of those, and that's to faithfully participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service, and our witness. Stewardship and service are key components of, of this profession that we have made as we become members of this church. And COVID-19 is really given that a unique look to many of us and, and changed many of our habits in attending and giving at church. And it's interesting because actually COVID had a more positive effect on me in regards to giving, which is kind of unusual because um, a couple of years ago, as my father was very ill and I would travel back and forth to Florida to help my mom, um, if I wasn't at church, I wasn't giving. And so I wasn't found that I wasn't giving as much as I was supposed to at church. And so with the advent of COVID, I was like, oh, I should just go online and give online. And so it was really easy to do. And I went online and made a weekly recurring gift. And so whether I am traveling or doing something else or not feeling well and not able to come to church, I'm still consistent in my giving to the church. And that has allowed us to try to meet our goal that we established last year in our stewardship to the church. So I encourage you, if you find it sometimes difficult to be consistent in your giving and you're not giving when you're not here, that that online option is, is really good. And it really changed the way that Tracy and I give to the church. Um, I ask you to consider to increase your gift in the next year. Um, and that's one thing is challenging. I, I have to admit, Tracy and I are not tithers yet, but we continue to increase and step up into the next category of giving each year, and we're going to make it there, right? And so I ask you to pray now for what God might lead you to do in giving in the next year. I also have heard kind of a reoccurring theme in the past few months. 
And people say, well, this is a season when, you know, we have other priorities or we have things to do or I have other commitments or work is really hard now. And as I looked at this, you know, commitment that we made as members, I also happened to serve on the nominations committee. And so I could not take a chance to stand in front of the church and not talk about the nominations committee. So I told George, well, you're getting a twofer today. Um, you know, as we took the words in the creation of a covenant as a member of this church, we all committed to God's season, not to our season. And I will tell you that, that it has been a humbling experience to be part of the nominations committee because I have to pick up a phone and call people I might not know to ask them to serve in various positions in the church. And I've gotten a lot of no's. I've gotten a lot of no, this isn't the season, or I'm having this and I have that. And I just want to encourage you to consider that this is God's season. And I want you to pray about how you can be serving our church because it is so important. And God bless you all. Thank you for listening.
Good morning. Good morning. Please join me in reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From them to you, John, the judge, the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. seated. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for your presence with us. Thank you for your almighty shadow. Thank you that you go before us and cover us from behind. Thank you that you are in our midst and our future is secure in the place you're preparing for us. We choose faith over fear today. We choose to set our eyes on you and not on our circumstances. We choose joy over despair. We choose peace over worry. Silence the lies of the enemy over us. Give us the awareness we need to step over his traps. We trust you to protect our way and bring us safely through the trials we're facing. Your, your words bring hope to our souls and comfort our hearts. Remind us of your strength today in us and through us. May we see glimpse of your glory and blessing along the way as we seek after you. For the victory and salvation are found in you alone. Today, God, we confess our fumblings and failures in accomplishing unity as we set aside yet another day to remind ourselves of the task. On this day, World Communion Sunday, Give us the eyes to recognize your reflection in the eyes of Christians everywhere. Give us a mind to accept and celebrate our differences. Give us a heart big enough to love your children everywhere. We thank you for setting a table with space enough for us all. Lord, we ask this in the name that taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, how be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now we'll ask Miss Jennifer to come up and share the children's moment. All right, Kason. You and me, buddy. How you doing? You got a lot of energy there, bud. I could use some of that. <laughs> I want to ask you a question. Do you know what that says? All right, you people in the front row. Do you know what that? Oh, God, yes. God is one of those words. God is nowhere. But if you change the way you look at it, you can change your perspective. And it says God is now here. All right. You're welcome. But because he is here. And um, today especially, right, we're going to have communion in just a little bit. I hope and we will pray that you will have a good day tomorrow and get that turtle. All right. I'll be praying for you, Case, and I know you can do it. But on another note, as Christ
Christians, we believe that God is everywhere, okay? And we believe that even though he's everywhere, he also can be in special places. Special places like this church on Sunday morning, special places like our prayer time, and most especially, God is with us in the breaking of the bread and the cup that's up there on the altar this, this morning. And today, all across the globe, millions, big number there, Casey, millions of Christians are going to take communion today together. And they're going to do, and we are going to do what Jesus taught us to do, which was to take the bread. We're going to pray over it. We're going to take the cup. We're going to pray over it. We're going to eat a little bit of the bread, and we're going to drink a little bit of the cup, and we're going to encounter God's presence when we do that. And just like that, just like food, uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner is good for our bodies, guess what? This food up here, the food that's in that baggie that we all have, that is important for our soul. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for this day and, and for World Communion Sunday, a day where all believers take time to break the bread and drink the cup. God, I just pray that we would indeed sense your presence in that moment, that we would know that you are here now. And God, we also say a prayer for Kaysen this morning, that tomorrow will be a great day for him. Amen. Now we ask that the ushers come forward, and now we prepare our hearts and our minds for celebrating grace by returning God's tithes and giving. God, we offer these gifts to you, knowing we can never outgive you, never balance the equation. Lord, please magnify these gifts to do your will. Amen.
The lesson today is from Mark 22 to 26. While they were eating, he, broke, he, he took a loaf of bread and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup and after giving things, he gave it to them and all of them drank from him. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for me. Truly I tell you, I will, ne I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, choir. How oh, wonderful. <clears throat> oh. 
Don't we have a good looking choir? Don't they look good? Yeah, they're going to help fill the church up too. So, and we have a new choir member today. Did he hear me? Yeah, new choir member, welcome. Yep, excuse me. Though. <laughs> Bishop Will Williman told a story about a six-year-old boy. And he told his mother that he didn't want to go to Sunday school. And she said, why don't you want to go to Sunday school? She said, they never do anything new. They just keep doing the same thing over and over again. And all they talk about is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> That's what we're here for today to talk about Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. That is what Holy Communion is all about. It's about Jesus Christ. It's about Jesus giving his life on the cross for the forgiveness of our sin. He broke his body, he spilt his blood that we might have life eternal. Now this sacred meal has caused many divisions in the churches in the past. It is one of great contention among denominations. And the one thing that should draw us all together sometimes speaks to us of what separates us. So just for a few minutes, I want to talk about the way people view Holy Communion. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of our Protestant brothers and sisters use the term the Lord's Supper. And indeed it is the Lord's Supper. He was the one that initiated it. He was the one that gave the invitation for all of us to come and participate. It is not a creation of the church. The Lord's Supper is not a creation of tradition. It is not a creation of a liturgist who said, oh, this may be a great thing for us to do. No, it was the creation of Jesus himself. When he gathered with his disciples there in the upper room, he said to them after they celebrated the Passover and the freedom of Israel and slavery in Egypt, he added these words. This is my body, broken for you. Likewise, after supper, he, he, he took the cup and he said, this is my blood, shed for you. Well, even in the sermon, when thousands of people, hundreds of people had come to preach, he said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. And many people left and, and went away because it was such a hard, hard say. They didn't understand what it meant. Now, our Protestant brothers and sisters also call this the Lord's Supper because these elements to them are considered to be symbols. Symbols of Christ breaking his body and shedding his blood for you and for me. Symbols. Why are symbols so important? Because without them we may forget. We may forget the great gift of God's salvation given to us through Jesus Christ our Lord. So these are symbols that we will never, ever forget God's great love through Jesus Christ. I have up here with me a little apple. Cheap little thing. It, 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 it's not very expensive at all. In fact, it's so cheap that the leaf is, comes out. Uh, when my father was dying in the hospital, this wonderful nurse came one day and gave him this apple. 
Now, I don't know if she did that for every patient. I kind of doubt it. I mean, these do cost a dollar at the dollar store. I, I, I don't know if she did that for everyone. I imagine she did it for some. But she and my father developed a very special relationship. That was my dad. Uh, and that was her. And when my father died, all my brothers wanted whatever they wanted. I didn't want anything. All I wanted was this little Bible, this little apple. And this apple to me became a memorial. It sits in my office on my shelf. And every day that, that I look at this apple, I remember. I remember my father. I remember who he is. Every time we, we come to this altar, we come to remember. What did Jesus say? Every time you take this, do so in remembrance of me. So, so this, this communion... This communion is the Lord's Supper, given to all of us. Now, our Catholic brothers and sisters uh, call this the Eucharist. Sounds like a fancy word, doesn't it? The Eucharist. It really is a very good word. It's a word that says to give thanks, to celebrate. Do you remember the first time you felt Jesus in your life. It may have been in Sunday school. It may have been in church. It may have been on a camping retreat. I, you know, wherever you first experienced the presence of Jesus Christ. And so, do you remember when you felt him so much? And you were so full of joy and happiness that, that Jesus Christ was in your life that you wanted to praise and thank God for that wonderful gift that he had given to you. Sometimes life catches up with us, doesn't it? And we forget, most of all, we forget to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for that wonderful gift of salvation that you've given us. Eucharist also means celebration. I don't know about you, but during this pandemic, I have missed this. Have you? Uh, Matthew 18 says, where two or three are gathered together, Jesus Christ is in the midst. Yeah, I'm coming today in celebration and gratitude for the great gift of salvation that God has given to us. Another name for this meal is called communion. That's what we call it in the Methodist Church, Holy Communion. Uh, there is nothing like being together. I can't tell you how much I miss people that are not here. How about you? How much, how much you miss that fellow? Our Sunday schools are down to about a third. Our worship service is down about a third. I mean, because of this pandemic. And, you know, I, I understand that. But, but I, I miss Holy Communion. And I've heard so many compliments about, oh, we get to watch you on TV, and it, we do appreciate everything that you do on Facebook and all the all the things that you do. I want you to know one thing. You can't experience communion watching the television. You can't. You might hear God's word. You might, you might uh, be moved. But communion is with, us, with ourselves. You know, uh, when you commune with nature... You experience nature. When you commune with a friend, you experience friendship. When you commune with God, you experience God. Holy 
communion. The fellowship that, that we share that no one else can ever say anything about. Uh, that wonderful, sweet communion with one another and with God. Right now, I would like for us to experience God. He's still alive in this church. He's still alive in the middle of a pandemic. He's still alive. It, it, you know, the Catholics talk about the Eucharist as, be, as something called transubstantiation. Do y'all know what that is? Transubstantiation is that when, when the priest says those words of institution, like I'm about to in a few minutes, there's, in Latin, there's one word there that calls, is called hocus pocus. Magic, magic tricks? Hocus pocus? Now, there's nothing magical about those words. That's just in the Latin liturgy, and that's where the word hocus pocus. But in that moment that the priest says those words, these elements actually become the real body and blood of Christ. For us as Methodists, we're, we, don't, we don't believe in transubstantiation. But what we do believe in is the living presence of Jesus Christ. When, when you come in a few minutes, or when you receive Holy Communion, and then come down to the altar, I want you to realize that as you partake of these elements, you're partaking of the living presence of Jesus Christ in your life. Communion is about forgiveness. Christ forgiving us and we forgiving others. Any of you know sign language? I don't. <laughs> but, but, but I saw this. You do. All right, what, what I saw... And what I realized, somebody showed me, that means a slate. A slate. And this means a clean slate. When you come to this table, God gives us a clean slate. By his blood and by the gift of his body, he cleanses us of all our sins. Isn't that something worth really celebrating? It's that easy button. It wasn't easy, though, because Jesus Christ prayed, played a great price. The, the uh, last term is sacrament. Sounds like an unusual kind of word, doesn't it? But do you know what that word means, sacrament? It means pledge of allegiance. Did you know that God pledged his loyalty and allegiance to you? You remember that little verse of scripture, John 3, 16? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him would never die, but have eternal life. God has pledged his allegiance to us by sending us his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, Christ paid his allegiance, his sacrament to us by giving his life all the way to the end. Now, what are you giving your life for? What is your sacrament? What is your pledge of allegiance? It should be to God. But is it all the way to the death? Roman soldiers used to have to take a pledge when they entered military service. It was a pledge to serve the emperor all the way to his death. Now we may not have to hang on a cross and die that way. And in fact, I don't think that's what God wants us to do. But every day of our lives, he wants us to pledge our allegiance to him. Not to our jobs, 
not just our family, not just others are getting ahead. But our main priority is to pledge our allegiance to Jesus Christ as he pledged his loyalty and allegiance to us. This is serious business right here. Real serious. And you know what? It's all about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And his love for all of us. Please turn with me to page 12 in your hymnals. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray in silence. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Please join me now on page 13 in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of death. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory, as we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father. Amen. All of you were given a packet. Please open it up.
little bag. And remove the elements. Now there's an easy way to open this if you listen very carefully. Take the tip, turn it down till it breaks. Then you can lift the top cellophane label real easy. And underneath is the wafer. Has everyone gotten the wafer? No, not yet. You got it. This is the body of Christ given for you. Then you lift the second tab. A little harder to do. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. I'll be glad when we get back to that day in which we can come and celebrate Holy Communion together at this altar. What I am going to ask you to do today is if you feel comfortable. Now, if you don't feel comfortable, please don't do this. If you're nervous, please don't do this. But now that you have received the elements, I invite you now to come down, if you can spread apart a little bit, and commune with God. When we commune with God, we experience God. And here is a great truth from Melinda and Lisa and Rosa. Would you come?
you'll stand and join us as we sing our closing hymn, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. I believe Jesus is here today. I believe he is everywhere and he is within our hearts and into our lives. When you come to this church, you commune with God and you experience God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.